I am way not interested in the whole Dean Phillips uh, primary challenge to Joe Judge, Biden. I'm, yeah. I, I, I am. I am sorry. But there's only one element in, that I'm interested in. <laughs> OK, you were in Fuego on this and I want to let you go on, on this because because uh, Dean Phillips himself poses no threat to Joe Biden. He's he's going to get like seven percent of the vote in some places. I don't know. It's just it's, it's not going to happen. But there is that little twist. Our old friend Steve Schmidt of I mean, what do we how do we describe Steve Schmidt? You know, big, big McCain oh. guy, guy who gave yeah. America Sarah Palin was on MSNBC yep. with both you and me, big yep. guy in the Lincoln Project until things blew blew, uh, blew up in a rather spectacular yep. fashion. He, who is Howard who's Schultz, the guy? don't forget the, How, okay. big man for, the main man for Howard you, Schultz. Okay, so you bailed me out on that one. You know, <laughs> here, here, here's one about how deep a dive you want to go. Remember when Howard Schultz was running for president? No. Yeah. Um, but uh, Steve Schmidt remembers because he got a lot of yeah. money from Howard Schultz, right? A lot, a lot. His, you know, and I was talking, so this forever. is the thing. Nothing pisses me off more than bad strategy and just like and and over overt self regard in defense of yeah. bad strategy. And and like as a former political professional, I still have some you know trade craft that I that I have some respect for. People that don't want to do things the right way. And and this Dean Phillips thing is just doing it such the wrong way in the most grifty and obnoxious way possible. And that's the thing that pissed me off about it. Not because I'm I'm like you, I'm not really yeah. worried it's a big threat to Joe Biden. Frankly, I've been in the Bill Crystal camp for like not recently really, but but for a long time I was and thought maybe it'd be good for Joe Biden to have somebody that ran a yeah. good faith campaign against him that was not trying to undermine him, that yeah. was not being the turd the punch bowl, but was just offering voters a generational change option. Yeah. That's right. much in the Joe Biden mold. I, I yeah. would have told you the scene would that happen. I think that yeah. probably wouldn't have worked. But uh, you know, you need you need a magic, you know, the the right the white whale to do that. Probably the non-white whale really to do yeah. that. But but anyway, I would have been open to that. This is not that. This is a uh, just I, I think you know all about ego mania, and it is an effort that maybe they maybe Dean Phillips. I don't think Steve Schmidt. Maybe Dean Phillips intends this to be a good faith effort. But it is not like the actual actions of it are only going to serve to harm Joe Biden. Luckily, I think they're going to be so incompetent that it won't actually do anything to harm Joe Biden in the end. But but running a campaign at this late of a date where your message is that is that Joe Biden has dementia and that the and that everything costs too much. Like that is that's not a helpful message to Joe Biden. And, and when Joe Biden is our first line of defense against the man we were just talking about earlier, singing about insurrectionists, then like maybe let's not. Healthy criticism, helpful criticism, you know, helpful efforts, you know, to to say, hey, here's something you could do better, Joe Biden. Sure. But but trying to undermine him uh, for, for no reason except your own egomania is crazy. And, and the last thing on this, just I got called by Howard Schultz. I didn't get called by Dean Phillips. But if I did get called, I would have said the same thing to both of them, which is, A, I am not going to do anything that will help Donald Trump, period, end of story. Number two. If you have a third party or Democratic primary effort that you think might actually help the effort to defeat Donald Trump, I'm happy to give you some free advice on that. But you need to go find a f-ing Democrat to, to help you do it, right? Like you do not need a former Republican as the front man about this. I, I, and 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 I've had calls from other uh, other folks. Like that is that is just that is just the only like logical advice that somebody in in steve yeah. schmidt's shoes should be able to give that is not what they did instead steve schmidt's out there giving press conferences for dean phillips that, that he's claiming to tim alberta that they're going to attack joe biden every day yeah I, I think it's luckily it seems like it's incompetent and they haven't got off the launching pad but it's super dangerous and i think that you know i felt like it was my role to just wave the flag and be like guys this is a grift let's not let, let's not do anything to get sucked up into this in a way I, that I, might I, help I, donald trump I, I, I agree with almost all of that. However, on the other hand, I, I do think, you know, that in a democracy, um, you know, the more sure. the merrier you get in, you make the case. It'll be um, a uh, low pressure test, I think, for Joe Biden. He's going to have to deal with those issues. Um, this will be a way of, you know, maybe tuning up the engine. Uh, Dean Phillips is not going anywhere. But, you know, in a democratic society, uh, we, we you know, run in. But, okay. but, but, but there is the, you know, the... We don't have time to get into it, but I mean, there 
there are, there are all the mixed motivations of the people who ought to be more right. behind the scenes. Let me put it that way. Okay, so you had a very, yeah. very hey, interesting just, piece. Just, oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, just really yeah. quick, one yeah. sentence. I agree with that. I'm just saying, don't tell me you're trying to save democracy when you're actually harming the guy that's at the first well, okay. front All line right. defending democracy. That's my only point. Don't piss on me no. and tell me it's raining, okay? Yeah, if you want to okay. get so, in the race, go uh, for Let's it. talk about you. But you I, have I written just, about like um, these elections that are coming up that I think are not on most people's radar screen, um, including the – I mean, how how real is, are, is, is, is the possibility that you have this Democrat, Brandon Presley, who might win in, in Mississippi – I think the Kentucky race is more realistic um, and the is sitting governor is interesting race. Andy Bashir, he's winning in the polls, Democrat. Uh, I th- and, and he is he does, you know, know a lot of the same same things as Presley, but he, there's been a lot of coverage of him. Yeah. So I was I was interested in the Presley race. Um, yeah. You know, because Mississippi's even redder than than Kentucky. Yeah. Mississippi's still Mississippi. OK. And, and you know, and, and so it, I think this could be a situation where the where the, just the math doesn't work out. And he comes up short, like right now, even in the good polls for him, he's at 46 Presley. Getting from 46 to 50, I think might be hard, you know, but even if he yeah. ends up in a place where 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 the incumbent wins this thing, 53, yeah. 47, there's a lot to learn from that. Right. Because there are a lot of other red states that aren't quite as red as Mississippi. And, and I think that the Democrats have done a poor job recently of recruiting the types of candidates that appeal in these states, you know, that maybe are not perfect on, on down the yeah. line on progressive values. Actually, you know, they shouldn't is. be, you yeah. know, and, right. And, and I think recruiting, and, and I think that, that, you know, there is a way to come by. I've always said this about, about Georgia. You know, I, there, I have a lot of criticisms of Stacey Abrams, but I do give her credit on the, on the voter reg thing. And I think if you're combining registering voters of color, with finding candidates that are heterodox, the, that that could be a winning formula, and I think that Mississippi, that Presley's okay. done a good job of being heterodox. I, I I don't know that Mississippi's done as good of a job as they should on the on getting black voters registered. Registered that might end up being the thing that that harms them. But anyway, I, I I find that to be interesting, and as a long term effort, I think that there's more opportunity there for center centrist candidates to do what Presley's doing in the Democratic Party for right now, maybe this will change in 10 years, that in the Republican Party where all the centrist candidates just get slaughtered in these primaries by MAGA candidates, even in blue states, as we've seen with Hogan and uh, and Scott and, uh, excuse me, and Baker and, and, and Massachusetts. So I'm just, I'm trying to be constructive and encourage candidates well, the, the, that are this, doing the right this thing. Is, this is constructive. Now, by the way, when you say heterodox, um, he takes a lot of positions that are quite socially conservative that would yeah, not true. play anywhere um uh, out, outside of say you know the the, the deep south but well that's that's, sure. that's not true but the point you make though is is one of the differences between the parties is the way that the centrists are being wiped out in republican primaries centrists continue to do relatively well in democratic primaries and i actually think that that's going to you know happen going forward i mean uh, I was just looking at the at the numbers of you know, for example, El- Elon Omar barely won her Democratic primary last time. Yeah, and that was before a lot of stuff happened. Um, so I think it's are- something to watch. Just I'm glad you mentioned that these squad primaries are going to be yeah. something to watch. And I don't, again, I, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm not putting a crystal ball. I'm just saying I, I think that there's that it's it, it is interesting, right? That that Jamal Bowman is getting a primary. I, mm-hmm. I believe Omar is getting another one. I believe Corey Bush is. Uh, and 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 um, uh, I'm missing one. Summer Lee, I think, is getting a primary. So so uh, this is interesting. We'll see if they all yeah. the face plant. Maybe maybe there's nothing here. But I I think that at least one difference that we know is there is that it, within the Democratic coalition, the center candidates feel like they got a shot to right. do these primaries. Right? Like right. that is not how, you're not seeing this on the Republican side. We're like Marjorie Taylor Greene is getting a primary from the center. Like that would be an absurd thing to do. Nobody would think yeah. that person would have a chance. Yeah. Um, no matter how insane she is, right? And and, and so uh in, in the Democratic side, there's a feeling that this is that this is possible. We'll see how it works out in practice, but we have seen a lot of primaries. You know, I, I've mentioned this before, but even in San Francisco, the the recall, you don't want to just rely on this one example, but yeah. but you know, there's certain examples out there that you've seen where this has worked within the Democratic coalition because of the nature of the coalition, which includes a lot of older, more conservative voters of color, more moderate, uh, sort of say the wrong word, but more small C conservative. And, uh, and, and now includes a lot more independent suburban types that, that and, have been pra- and, and pragmatists. Has been yeah, pragmatists, exactly. as we saw in the yeah. 2020 presidential. Okay, so briefly in the time that we have left, we haven't uh, spent much time uh-huh. on the Republican 
primary fight mainly because oh, good. I, I knew I had one I think, more I, rant. I, I think we know. Well, okay, I think we know where this is going, but I mean, the storyline of the day, and of course, there has to be a storyline of the day because otherwise, political reporters and pundits get bored, right? Um, is Nikki Haley surging? Tim Miller, is she? I mean, I it can't. looks like she's. It looks like she's picking up endorsements, money, edging on the polls. No indication she's going to beat Donald Trump. But what do you think? I just can't. Why? Uh, I mean, I, look, we had my. I, 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 it's fine to say that Haley would be a better candidate, that that she's the best hope in a in a really uphill battle. I mean, Mike Murphy had a thing for us where it's like DeSantis yes. should drop out because at least Haley right. has momentum. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I, I think maybe me and Murph would have a different assessment yeah. of the likelihood of success of that. But but I, I think that that so I just want to be clear. That is not what I'm saying. It's fine to try. I, I think right. it's always good to be out on the field and try. Right. Right. And Haley beating Trump would obviously be great. It's worth trying. But, but what be bother, better bothers world. me. Yeah, exactly. What bothers me is like the horse race industrial complex. And that's why I hope people can come to the bulwark for for real <laughs> political analysis. Here's political playbook today. I woke up this morning and I was like, am I still dreaming? That subject line in my inbox, Haley's moment. Yep. And then it begins with every four years it happens, a candidate gets some surge of momentum and is treated to a few weeks of the spotlight. For a short period, it feels like they might actually take this top spot, but then there's a crash and burn. And the spotlight inevitably cycles over to one of their competitors. I was like, oh, okay, Playbook's finally got it right. This might yeah, be something yeah. that happens to Haley. Right. And then, so, but then they go, yet, every once in a while, the momentum sustains and feels real. That's where former Gov Nikki Haley is right now. What? That seems a little premature. What are you okay. talking about? The, the the examples they gave Herman of the people that didn't sustain Herman Cain, New Gingers, Rick Perry, Michelle Bachman, all these people got up into the 25, 30% range in national polls i like there was real reason for them to have the spotlight i, I like, they were winning this. herman kane was winning for a little while in the primary <laughs> uh, and nikki haley isn't winning she's losing by 40 points yeah. Donald Trump, even in this even in this iowa poll where, where she gained 10 points no okay great she's gained 10 points she's up at 16 that's that's worth noting she's losing to trump by i gotta do math in my head here it's so many i've got to like count on my fingers 27 and and, and and the DeSantis voters, when you ask them what their second choice is, more of them like Trump than Haley. So so if you added it's that hard. in, Haley's down by like 30 points to Trump in Iowa, which should be his weak state. So the idea that that, but, that her momentum the, feels real. Line, well, it's a trend. <laughs> I mean, Tim, gotta, Tim, I want you to keep zoom in. It's, it's Friday. Can zoom in Can we see the trend keep line, though. It's like her, it's going alive. from here to here. Look, I, I, I'm, look, look, I'm not. Look, I'm not. A, I am not a Nikki Hope Haley fan. Fine. I have written about her, but but in terms of you look at the field, if if you close your eyes and you hope for a unicorn hard enough, sure, you can imagine that she becomes the. I mean, DeSantis is just blown up on the launch pad, you know, multiple yeah. times. So Did she's you see the his one line right now about wearing a boot on his head. I mean, it's really good. It's getting. It's getting really he, bad. He has, he has the best people working for him, right? I mean, you oh can tell gosh. his comms folks, they sat around that room on the whiteboard. What do we say? Okay, we will eat our hat. No. <laughs> Anybody else got any ideas? No, Ron yes. should say, the governor should say, I will put a boot on yeah. my head. Okay, I'm just trying to. Donald I just, Trump debates. I'm trying to reverse Donald engineer Trump. how these ideas, you know. If Donald yeah, Trump shows I think up, it, I will put a boot like on my head. Come from Casey. I don't, or maybe Ron himself, he's not that good, but. Yeah, okay, no, I just, I hear you on the unicorn and on the hope. That's why I'm trying to be, that's why it's Politico, though, that that, it, that they are supposed to be offering you insider political news that gives you a peek behind the curtain about what's really happening. And and they're totally wrong. And so it's like, okay, have hope for Nikki Haley. I, I don't want to take anyone's hope away. No. You know, hope, I love people, I love hope. You know, hope dies last. But um, but hope don't will kill you. Don't gaslight so we'll kill you don't fucking look at, don't write me a yeah. memo about how about how nikki haley it has real momentum and newt gingrich didn't newt gingrich almost won that primary uh, so anyway I remember, I remember um, that. I, i'm a no i'm a no on nikki haley momentum from an objective standpoint i'm a yes from fairy's unicorn standpoint if you want to if you want to have a purple drink and dream a little dream about nikki that's cool with me well again I, i'm not a, i'm not a I, I'm not a Nikki fan necessarily. I've written all you. kinds of stuff about her, you know, the lightness and the, you know, the, the incredible lightness of Nikki Haley and the way that she went back and forth. She hadn't, couldn't decide what she Arch. wanted to be. However, 
if we were to wake up tomorrow in a world in which Nikki Haley was the nominee instead of Donald Trump, leaving aside the partisan horse race, it would you be could retire. a fundamentally better world. Yeah. It would be so much better. And don't don't DM me about how she put her position on this or position of this. Well, if we didn't have to deal with Donald Trump, but but that's why I keep invoking the unicorn. Right. Because how do you get yeah. to that? You get to you get to unicorn something 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 meteor. Um, Donald Trump dies of right. you know the Big Mac. I could, because I, 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 I don't see how it happens otherwise. I could open a bar. I could start writing about other stuff. You know, I could start ex exploring new interests. If, if that if that world see, happened, see, um, see Tim, uh, you've just given there. away you've given away a huge secret here. Okay, <laughs> we, I, I'm not even sure we should publish this because I think people think, "Oh, you never Trumpers. You love Trump. Trump is you know is is the is the wind beneath your wings." And the and the real the real truth yeah. is that. No, we want to be done, and you know, we, feel like, we, we feel like we we feel like we are explore. we are you know chained to this rock, lashed to the mast of all of this. If Donald Trump were to go, we could move on into the That's sunny great. uplands of the future <laughs> of our lives. Right? That's great. <laughs> and my little brain, I just I've I've areas of my brain that I can't even explore, you know, because they've been locked in, in an orange dungeon for eight years. That is so. so you know what? It. That is exactly. It's so funny you should say that because <laughs> I, I think so. This is our therapy session. It's like <laughs> just imagine what your life would be like. Maybe that would be the thing to do sometimes: to sit around and go, "Okay, now close your eyes and mm. just imagine." We're not making a prediction, but mm. what would your life be like if you never had to think or write about Donald Trump? See, the problem is, you know, that's never going to happen. Is, is that is that it's. It's never going to be that moment where the sun rises, the, the leaves are green, the birds are chirping, and then and the name Trump will never have to leave your lips again because there's always Eric and Ivanka and Don Jr. <laughs> and and that vast ecosystem. The tall out there. one, Baron. The top. All right, so yeah, Baron Trump. I, okay, I was hoping to end this, go into the weekend with a little bit of a dollop of hope, but here oh, we are. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to go off into my into my happy place, and I'm going to imagine that, a world without Trump, just for like five minutes. Just think about that. Okay? That sounds good. I, I'll yeah. join you there for five minutes. Then I'm going to distract myself, turn to LSU Alabama this weekend. Go Tigers. Hey, you know what I'm doing tonight? I'm going What's to that? a Milwaukee Bucks game, Bucks versus the Knicks down at Pfizer oh, nice. with my French grandson, who this will be his first American basketball game, his first NBA game. So I'm taking That is him huge. Down Tell him to, to send see. me a text. I want an update. Giannis, Dame, he, the little he, pick and roll. Oh, that's going to be good. He's going to be, be wearing game. a Giannis jersey. Little little French guy that. wearing the Giannis jersey. Okay, Tim, I we'll love talk that. in a couple of weeks. All right. All right we'll and thank you all time. for listening to this weekend's Bulwark Podcast. I'm Charlie Sykes. We will be back on Monday. And we'll do this all over again. Happy place. Happy place.